Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World again, and thanks for taking the time to check out another one of my Battlefield 5 videos. Just remember though, if you do like what you see, make sure you hit subscribe and most importantly the bell icon because apparently subscriptions don't do anything anymore. And also feel free to leave a suggestion in the comments for what you want to see in the next video. Now, in today's video, we're actually going to take a bit of a step back and look at Battlefield 5 and how it's changed from the last few games. Because I think at the moment, the general consensus is that it's already better than a lot of the most recent games, and especially, it's better than Battlefield 1. And obviously, I mean, that's probably got a lot to do with the gunplay changes and things like no premium pass, but it's got me thinking, what else annoyed me in the previous games? And, well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. And so, here's what I think are the five most annoying things that Battlefield 5 removes or improves on. Okay, so to kick off, probably the first thing you're going to notice straight away that's missing in BF5, if you've played a lot of BF1, are the behemoths. But if for some reason you don't remember, these were the big AI-controlled vehicles like the Zeppelin, which were meant to be like a comeback mechanic for the late game. Except the problem is, is that they very rarely actually worked in turning games around. And even when they did, well, it wasn't like the skill of the team had anything to do with it. And also, not to mention that personally, I just think DICE should have learnt from Battlefield 4's gunship that these kind of vehicles aren't really fun for anyone except for the person in the gunner's seat. Also, speaking of indirect fire, well, another annoying feature that was particularly bad in BF4 and to a lesser extent BF1 are mortars, which obviously are a problem for the same reason as the gunship, because they also kill you from above and from across the map where you can't really do anything about it. On the other hand though, what BF5 has introduced to kind of replace them are firstly the call-in rockets, which are obviously more powerful, but aren't always available. And also I should mention there's the PIAT, which technically is an AT launcher, but kind of can function as a short-range handheld mortar that requires quite a bit more skill to use. Now, another thing that I thought was really annoying in Battlefield 1, and thankfully has been removed in BF5, are the Elite Kits. Because even though I think they were added to make up for the fact that BF1 didn't have as many vehicles, they didn't really exactly play like vehicles in-game. Most importantly though, when you went head-to-head -head with an Elite Kit, it just didn't feel fair to know that they were sponging up way more bullets than any regular guy should. And for me personally, the most ridiculous case of this were the Cavalry Troopers, and I still can't understand why they just didn't make the horse a vehicle without a kit attached. Honestly though, probably even more annoying than the Elite Kits in Battlefield 1, I think everyone can agree, was the sniper spam in that game. And along with the fact that most other weapons in BF1 were pretty terrible at long range, part of the problem was because the bolt actions had what was called the sweet spot mechanic. This was the mechanic where at a particular set range, bolt actions would have a guaranteed one-shot kill even if they didn't land a headshot, which is not only obviously unbalanced and led to a lot of annoying WTF was that moments, it also led to a lot of snipers camping at particular pre-ranged locations. But finally, to finish up, the last annoying feature I want to mention in this video that's been with us for years and I'm personally glad to see the back of in Battlefield 5 is 3D spotting. And I know technically there are still ways to 3D spot in the new game, but what I mean by this is the ability that previously everyone had to spot at any time by default. A lot of people I've found are currently missing this feature at the moment, probably because the game is still so new, but I can tell you from personal experience after playing this game for almost a year now that you will get used to it because what you'll find is that it's actually a lot more immersive to know that you're actually looking for players and not for Doritos. And you'll also find that things like camouflage and concealment actually work now as well. But anyway, guys, I guess that just about wraps up this video. So before you go, make sure you let me know what you think about these features in the comments section below. Do they annoy you as well, or do you think they should have been left in the game? And obviously, is there anything else you think I've left off this list? As always, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And also, don't forget, you can find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch. And as always, until next time, see you later. 
and have a good one.